Hi, this is Trev and welcome to my blog, Bead Rolling. Have you bought yourself a bead roller? You've rolled your first panel out like that and then it's all buckled and warped and distorted out of shape and it's really frustrating. If this is you and you haven't found a solution to the problem then this could be the video just for you. So here are my rusty old wheel boxes. I think you can see that their use by date is well and truly expired. So I'm going to make some fresh new ones from scratch and this video is going to show you from start to finish how I did it. This video is mostly going to be concentrating on the bead rolling on the top panel and how to do it without creating distortion. So we've got a new piece of metal here and as you can see it's got no structural rigidity whatsoever. So we need to roll a bead into it or fold it to give it some stiffness. So when we bead roll something, this is a typical bead roller here with a set of dies that we're going to use, it distorts the material. It distorts the material for a variety of reasons, mainly it drags the metal in from each side and it also stretches it along the bead, particularly in the shoulder area, so it's disproportionately stretching along the bead which means that it tries to force the material around the lower wheel as we can see with this thin strip that I've bead rolled. This is a pre-stretched piece of metal that I bead rolled and you can see that it lies nice and flat and the other piece here is one that I didn't bother doing any pre-stretching and we can see that it's pulled the panel out of shape just what you don't want to happen. So we've got our piece of metal here marked out with a sharpie and this is where I'm going to bead roll along those lines. I'm going to use the highest crown wheel we've got on our wheeling machine to pre-stretch the material. I'm going to port moderate tension, not too heavy and not too light. We don't want to be doing a hundred passes but we don't want to veer off the line and also pour an awkward second line in that we've got to try and disguise afterwards. So I'm tensioning up the English wheel and I'm pushing the material through, not pulling it back. So I'm going to change sides from side to side. If you're not used to using an English wheel, this is the easiest way of ensuring that you stick to the line and it doesn't waver off. Because if you start pulling it back in the other direction and you're not used to doing it, you're going to be all over the place. One for the bagpuss fans there. So, um, yeah, this is the kind of result you want to end up with. As you can see, it's now stretched. And we're actually going to use the bead roller to absorb that extra material so that it lies flat again afterwards. So I'm setting up the bead roller here to release the anvil on top of the material to trap it, tighten it up till it's finger tight and then we can use a spanner to correctly tension the rollers against each other and you can measure out exactly how many turns you want you know i.e. one turn, one and a quarter, one and a half, two turns etc and if you make a, a note of exactly how many turns you gave it then you can replicate it on the next bead that you've got to roll releasing the tension again to remove the panel. Don't just drive off the end of the panel. You can see here that uh, the top wheel is the one with the bead on and it's pushing directly on top of the pre-stretched area. So that's the way I've gone about it and it seems to work really, really well. Oh, for a motorized B roller and one that's strapped down too. So there we have it, our nice tension free panels, they're led now flat on the table as you can see they're not trying to spring anywhere. So in my efforts to keep things brief I realised that I've breezed over too much of the detail. So our English wheel setup, upper crown wheel, lower crown wheel, I've used the highest crown wheel available on the lower. 
we're looking at about moderate tension I would say you want to put the material through about 10 to 15 passes you don't want so much tension on it that if you veer off the line slightly you almost roll a second bead into the material you don't want too little tension because you don't want to be passing it through a hundred times to create the stretch required so keeping the material in this position with the mini bead facing skywards we move over to the bead roller so the bead roller set up with a male wheel mounted on the top and our bead facing the male we almost turn it inside out on itself the tension required on the bead roller is probably one and a half to two turns dependent on which model of bead roller you've got try it out on some scrap metal first and get the desired results before you turn it on your project a uh, little neat little trick here is to use some uh, masking tape to measure out the lengths so that I know where to fold and that will just line up with the pen line and then I can fold that using the folding machine next So on a long panel like this, best to use a set square just to make sure that you've got a perfect 90 degree position before you put that fold in. So you can use the old panel as a former and a buck. It really doesn't have to get too much more technical than this guys. That old panel is just telling me where the curved section needs to be and then I can use this piece of tube to put a nice radius in it and you can do a lot just by bending things by hand as long as you're careful of course. There we have it, all finished. So the rest of the video is now gonna go back over what we looked at in the hammer forming video. I'm gonna show you some more hammer forming detail that was missed out of the first video. And we're also gonna give you a bit of an overview on creating the sides, doing some uh, folding as well with the folding machine and basically marking stuff up. Just gonna give you a bit of an overview really in this video right from start to finish including the uh, painting stages. So I've used the old wheel box to mark out our template. For the side, this template will be used to mark out the steel that the side's gonna be made out of. Pay close attention to the line going directly down the center because this is a symmetrical panel and we can have a line down the center which will be extremely useful for keeping everything in check. I'm marking it out now using my washer technique so I can mark out the width of the two lips because we're hammer forming it the inner lip needs to be not as wide as the outer lip because we're going to form it around the curve and the less material that's there the easier it is to shrink it.
So our two sides are all cut out, all I need to do now is to put our folds in. All folded up and ready for hammer forming. Just use an electric shear here to cut out the panel. I'm using the template also to cut out the wooden former. I gave greater detail in uh, my last tips and tricks of how to get this to fit accurately so it might be worth watching that video if you haven't already seen it again just check in for accuracy So this wooden former is now screwed to the side of the panel on the inside And the hammer forming, I've put a bit more detail, the detail that was missing. People said that I hadn't got enough detail in from start to finish. So I'm trying to give you a little bit more of that missing detail. I was also quite flattered by one or two uh, comments from people that were claiming that the video was a fake. And I'd actually made these panels using a machine and then laid the panel over the top of the wood afterwards and pretended that I'd used it to form the uh, panels. So I was quite flattered by that, so thanks very much for those comments. Like I said, if you haven't watched the previous video, certainly uh, watch this after you've watched this one because it's going to give you more detail about how to do this procedure. Something I didn't really cover in the last blog was making the hammer former into a kind of sandwich panel, i.e. sandwiching the metal between two pieces of ply. And the reason I didn't do that with this particular hammer forming project was because there are some quite tight radiuses and what can happen I found personally is that the metal will rise up where you're trying to shrink it around the corner and it'll rise up in a way underneath the ply and you can't exert enough pressure on it to keep it flat that's why I prefer to use my dolly method on panels with tight radiuses if the panel was uh, like a straight panel maybe maybe radius the other way then I would certainly use a wooden sandwich technique on that. I've planished the lip over as far as I want to take it for now and it's come out as well as it could have done really. So what I'll do next is I'll just offer up the top section whilst the wood's still in just to make sure that the fit is somewhere near. 
So this is the first trial fit of the two panels and they fit like a glove. Couldn't have been happier. I did go into a far more detail about how to ensure an excellent fit between the two panels in the previous blog. I've got my two sections prepared ready to be spot welded together. This panel goes at an angle on the ends and the reason they've done this is because there's three holes that uh, are drilled through this panel to attach it back to the vehicle. I think this is offset so that the hole on the end uh, doesn't get tangled up with the lapped welded seam. Uh, I've joggled this one as well, so this one's joggled so that it'll sit nicely on top of the other one so that the lower section will lay flat against the van rear panel. I've used many different types of weld through primer. I've used the copper ones, the zinc ones, the aluminium ones, all sorts of types. And to be quite honest with you, you're never ever going to eradicate the issue of panels rusting between but it just gives it a bit of extra protection. I think what's more important is that you actually seal it afterwards to stop any ingress of moisture. I think that's actually more important than using this product full stop. I've used this stuff this time round because I'm just trying as many different ones as I can. This is a kind of etch weld through primer. What I find that's good with this stuff is that it doesn't scratch off as easy. I find that a lot of the zinc based, uh, the metal based ones, uh, they can scratch off very, very easily. And this does seem to be um, more resistant to scratching, I would say. So the two sections are now spot welded together. Are there a particular struggle getting these lengths right here across there and there? I realised that it could very easily become twisted as I was welding it up. So I, I gripped it and measured it several times to make sure that the length was exactly the same from there as it is to there. So that uh, the panel didn't twist round. Not gonna have too much of an issue along here because all I've really gotta do is make sure that this panel fits as flush as I can get it along there, which means that the back edge are lie pretty flat anyway. So the next thing I've gotta do is turn the panel round and take the template that I've already offered up to the van internal quarter panel to make sure that this fits properly. So I just offer it up into the panel and then I can make any little tweaks and adjustments to the edge of this lip before I then go and offer it up to the van just to make sure it's going to fit properly. First trial fit. I'm happy with that. Very happy. So the inside of the wheel box has been coated with a product called Rust Buster 121. This is one of the hardest wearing epoxy coatings that you can buy. I, I believe so anyway. Uh, independent tests have been done on this product and it's come out very much on top. Uh, what I have noticed with it is that it doesn't like sealer very much. So what I always do is I give the metal a bit of a key up, uh, at least 80, 180, give it a real good key, and then I've uh, thinned it down and blasted it, uh, two nice thick coats on there, give it plenty of protection. And then what I do, when, once it's fully cured, is then I seam seal it with some polyurethane afterwards, not before, and then this stuff then doesn't attack the polyurethane because it's dry now. It only attacks it when you put it on top of it. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll seam seal this uh, so that no water can get between the sheets of metal. The other side has been done with a product, another epoxy product called HB Body. Always make sure epoxy products are well keyed before you put anything over the top. The paint won't stick that well to it unless it's been thoroughly keyed. If it has been thoroughly keyed then it sticks really really well but you must key it in all the little nooks and crannies. Uh, so that's just another little tip I would definitely like to lay on you. Don't let it cure and then blast something over the top because it just won't stick and it could come off in a big sheet if you're not careful. 
we're all prepped up and ready to go. I've seam sealed all the joints. I pay particular attention to this joint around here. I've wiped it in and wiped it back out again because I want it to look like it's sort of fairly original. I don't want it to look like it's full of sealer and all one panel. If you get what I'm trying to say, you can still see the definition of the panel edge against the other panel coming this way. So I'm going to get the paint on next. Well, these have certainly come out well enough. Very happy. Hope you can see the difference with the sealer line now. You can see that this edge is clearly defined now it's painted. Whereas this sealed edge here looks like it's made the panel into one piece. And that's the difference I was talking about. Well, thank you very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you've got anything to add, then there's a comment section down below, because lots of people read that and share information in there as well. And if you didn't like it, well, that's not really my problem, is it? Uh, hammer time. Who won the hammer competition from the last time round? Of course, the question was, what is the new colour of my Bedford wheels? And the answer is red or orange or orangey red. Okay. A winner will now be picked at random. So who won the hammer? Northern Monkey. Wheels are red, yes, answer the question correctly. <laughs> well done mate. So Northern Monkey, you're the winner. All you've got to do is email me your address and I'll get this posted off to you right away. My email address is in the video description. Congratulations to Jeff, the last hammer winner. I'm glad you're pleased with the hammer. Jeff stood here holding his hammer in front of his camper van that he restored and saved from the scrapyard. So I've got another one of these hammers. Who would like this beautiful planishing hammer? All you've got to do is answer the fairly straightforward question. I fitted a non-genuine engine to my Bedford van. What is the engine I fitted? Answers in the comments section below. And then you too could be the winner of one of Trev's famous planishing hammers. So the next hammer winner will be announced on the next Metal Shaping video. But I'm going to give Metal Shaping videos a rest just for an extremely, exceptionally short time. So don't get too excited folks. Don't start panicking just yet. And I do still have a few Metal Shaping tips up my sleeve that I'd like to share with you. But... What I'm going to show you next is I'm going to cover a few more bases uh, because whilst I've been making these metal shaping videos I've also been packing in other videos in between and the most commonly asked thing is being asked all the time is Trev what gauge metal do you use and that question isn't as simple an answer as you would believe it so that's probably going to be the next question so that it nails that issue for me fair and square on the head because I keep being asked this over and over again. I'm also going to pack in a paint polishing video. So I'm going to show you how if you've sprayed something and it looks a little bit orange peely and you want to make it look lovely and flat and lovely flat and shiny and perfect and everything, I'm going to show you all the processes that I personally use to polish up the, uh, the my paint work. I'll share with you those little tips and tricks as well and I'm also going to show you a rust removal remedy that um, I borrowed off somebody else probably somebody off the internet which has been very very successful for removing rust from small items of bodywork so these are the videos that are going to come next and then we'll crack straight back in to the metal shaping stuff so Thank you very much anyway guys, thanks for watching. If you'd like to help support the channel, um, you can leave a donation. There's a link in the video description, but only if you want to help support the channel. And I'll catch you next time, so bye for now. Oh, well, I have to feel it fine, you